Well, for more on the plight of the Yazidis, I'm joined by Susan Shan. She is the author of Sinjar, 14 Days to Saving the Yazidis from the Islamic State. Welcome to our broadcast. Thank you very much. What inspired you to write this book? Oh, well, that's interesting. I work with a Yazidi colleague, and during the uh, two weeks in August 2014, I watched the extraordinary quick movement of the government at, to which he was a major part. And um, as I saw how quickly things moved, and we both know in Washington nothing moves quickly, I was intrigued by what pushed the U.S. to move so quickly. And through my colleague, I was able to investigate that. And what did you find out? I found that there was a group of remarkable people at the State Department, at USAID, small level players, not big players, who took this plight of the Yazidis on personally and worked around the clock to convince the White House that this was an essential part of Obama's foreign policy, that genocide would not be tolerated by the United States and it would be stopped. And they were successful. How much of it was dictated by that and how much was it by those unforgettable pictures that we saw, the live rescue from the top of that mountain on on domestic cable networks. Yeah, I think there was a, a that played a, obviously a very large part because it was a, you know, it was a terrific story for news organizations. These are a gentle, simple people with an exotic faith being terrorized by ISIL who couldn't be empathetic to that. But I think the US government would have um, would not have gone quite as far. So now that they are not in the news anymore so much, um, how do you think they're doing? This doesn't look good right here no, at this camp on it, the, in it's Mount Sinjar. Yeah. There are almost 500,000 Yazidis in IDP camps in Kurdistan. They are no longer in Nineveh province. They've been pushed out. To that extent, ISIL was successful. It wanted an ethnic cleansing of Nineveh, and it got it. Do they have access to medical care and food there? Um, I think the Kurdistan government is doing, to a certain degree, the best it can. It's, quite frankly, a bit of a corrupt government. It's difficult to move. These IDP camps are outside of major cities. They're out far in the countryside. It's difficult for the government to move the, the kinds of materials they need. Um, but they don't have any access to education, which is probably the biggest problem. You have a whole generation of children now that are growing up without the basics of education. What more needs to be done? Well, I think the Iraq government and the Kurdistan government need to embrace the future of Yazidis. I think the biggest tragedy would be if the Yazidis left. They're immigrating in huge numbers to Australia, the United States, Germany. I mean, breaking up a thousand-year-old community because they feel unsafe in their own country. It's really, really empowering what you've done. It's, it's, it's so commendable that you've shined a light on something that, um, for, for all accounts, has been forgotten about in the daily news cycle. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be out there to talk with these people, remarkable people, who've endured terrific hardship and who are resilient. It was very inspiring. All righty. Well, Susan Chan, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.